So guys, Romeo here. Today we're gonna to talk about Casil Carry, specifically my Casil Carry handgun for the last nine years, right? Since uh, 2012, something like that, all the way up until now, 2023. Right, two handguns on the table here. My first Casil Carry handgun, Glock 19 Gen 4. We're gonna unload show clear. There's nothing in the magazine, and there's nothing in the chamber, so we are all clear, guys. Alright, so that's my first Kasuke handgun, long time ago. This is my current Kasuke handgun, Pig uh, Sig 365XL, empty bag, nothing in the chamber, so we're all clear on this table. Alright, the goal for this video, just talk about two things, guys. What handguns I carried over you know, the course of 9 years, 10 years or so, starting from way back then, and then talk about the thought process that I had behind these carry guns. What kind of changes did I make? What sort of things I prioritize over the years? And I'm gonna tell you this, for a lot of us regular Joes out there, especially here in the United States where we conceal carry, you know, conceal carry is like a journey, man. It's a journey. Things change, things evolve over time. You start out with something, you make it work, and then you figure out what's important, what's not important. You upgrade, you make little changes, and it evolves. Right? And, and the, the things that you, you find that are important to you, those priorities change over time as well. You know, it's different. Romeo Casio carrying back then is much different from Romeo Casio carrying right now. All right, so that's just the goal, guys. I, I've been drinking a little bit, so I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna rant a lot, but you know, just hang in there, okay? We're gonna take it slow. I'm gonna walk you through the handguns that I got. All right, there's not a ton of them, but I just want you to be able to just follow along, and hopefully, you guys can pick up on the things that I considered, and maybe that can help, you know, uh, help you decide on what's right for you, what's not right for you. All right, let's do this. All right, so starting with the first one, like I said earlier, Glock 19 Gen 4, just a straight up standard. Glock. I already unloaded and show clear earlier, so we're all good here. Just double check. All right, back then, so this is, let's go back, all right, 2012, I remember correctly, 2012, right, just turned 21, something like that, start concealed carrying for the first time, especially in, in Washington State. That was the, the earliest you can get the CPL, concealed carry license. Back then, you didn't have a ton of the micro compact options that we're used to now, and I remember correctly, guys, it felt like 50% of all dudes, they carry some kind of a Glock 19, a Glock 17. You had guys who carry Smith & Wesson, the m and um, The 2.0s didn't come out back then, but that's, that's what most guys did. We carried a compact, or almost like a full-size handgun on ourselves. Width of these guns, about 1.3, 1. 1. You know, something inches. I carried the stock for a long time. It, it, the gun is still stock. The only thing I did was... Uh, over time, I picked up a light, this TLR HL, uh, TLR1 HL light, was, to me is the gold standard flashlight for the regular average Joe, you know, 130 bucks, you're getting a lot of lumen, this is freaking bright guys, good reliable light, and then I just changed out the plastic sights, which were the factory ones, I changed out to Dawson fiber optic sights, because my eyes pick up on it a little bit easier, but beside that, the trigger, everything else, all stock, barrel, all stock, you don't gotta mess around with that stuff guys, it's not important, it's not gonna make you shoot any better, alright, I carried it in the, um, my favorite holster, which is the G-Code, G-Code uh, holsters. Uh, this one is, I forgot what it was called, but it's a suede material, but it's very thin. So everything keeps a low profile, very sturdy, very reliable, easy to draw out. I carried this hunk of, hunk of steel on my, on my side. I carry four o'clock, guys. So, you know, yeah, also, you, you can make it work. A lot of guys carried it at appendix. Some guys, like me, carried it at the four o'clock, three o'clock position on our hips. But we made it work. Right, we made it work. It wasn't the slimmest thing, and there were the single stack 9mm handguns, like really, really small ones, but they were just really snappy and they were really small. And you only had, what, 8 to 10 rounds in the magazine. That's all we had back then, all right? But this is what we ran with, and we made it work. I shot this a lot. It was butter smooth. I forgot how many rounds. I think in my last video, I was saying like 8K or something like that. I know it's at least 8K. I'll look at my logbook later on. But this is what we had. And again, that brand loyalty. Everybody was just saying, buy Glocks, buy Glocks. And that's what it was like back then. Even to this day, it's still pretty prevalent. I was definitely guilty of that. I told a lot of my friends, just get Glocks. So they work. And if it works for me, it works for you guys. It works for my friends. So I felt like you couldn't really go wrong. But there were there are good options out there too, guys. But back then, 
clocks dominate the market and still do today. All right, next up, I have my Glock 48, just the original Glock 48 here. A little choke thing, nothing in the mag, nothing in the chamber, so we're all good, okay? So I picked this up, I, if I remember correctly, this was 2019, all right, 2019. So let's just uh, go back a little bit, okay? So back in 20, I remember this correctly, 2013, 2014, Glock released uh, their slimline handgun. The first one was uh, like a th Glock 42, it was in 380. Nobody gave a shit about that. <laughs> Nobody, everybody knew they were going to make one in 9mm. That's what everybody waited for. I think it was like a couple years later, 2014, 2015, they came out with Glock 43, which was a 9mm. This thing was insane. It was super small. It had, I remember it was like a 7 or 8 round magazine, polymer mag. It was, it was ridiculous, right guys? We knew they were going to make improvements. Now in 2019, Glock came out with the 48 and they had the 43. And uh, basically what we had was we had a longer grip, a sort of a longer grip. So get my full hand around it. I think this is the same grip plane as a Glock uh, 19, pretty much. No accessory rail, no optics cut, but it was slim. You take a look straight down here, it is slim. And this is where we start getting into those, uh, for me especially, I start experimenting with the concept of a slim concealed carry handgun. We got one point, I think it was like one inch, 1.1 or 1.2 inch. So you can definitely tell that it's much slimmer width wise compared to the Glock 19 here, all right? now. During this time, the SIG 365 and then the XL and the subsequent one, that is the real game changer. Those guns were so successful and they're really, really good guns to this day. I mean, I, I carry one right now. Back then, they were really good guns. But I chose the Glock because I was very familiar with it. I remember that brand loyalty guy? It was real, man. Back then, I only trusted Glocks. It's something that I was familiar with. I, I didn't really want to venture out and try different brands, also, mostly because you know, I didn't have a lot of money i can't just buy different you know magazines different guns all the time so i figure okay if i'm gonna get something i'm just gonna get another glock something that i'm familiar with something that i know how to use i, I can anticipate the trigger pull i understand the trigger i can shoot this really well and i did shoot this very well but this is not a great uh, gun to pick up you know i knew that they were going to come out with an optics cut and accessory rail later on but during 2019, I just wanted to try something a little bit different, you know, see, we'll see what it was. Looking back at it, I should have been patient. Uh, patient would have paid off, saved some money. 10 round OEM magazines, plastic, you know, polymer, good, but, man, that's lame, okay? You know, you're going to notice that uh, the thing that saved me on this platform was the Shield Arms. This is a Shield Arms steel 15 round magazine made in the U.S. 15 rounds in this gun, now we are talking, okay? Now we're back up to that Glock 19 capacity. I, I want to carry 15 rounds. Um, this is a Gen 2. I have some of the Gen 1 magazines. And these, they're like 95% reliable, I would say. Almost nine, almost 100%. Some people, they claim that they, they depend on these with their life. And I like them. I really, really like them. I try to like them. But I've had a couple really weird jams where it just it didn't make sense. I don't know if I'll ever go back to these. But they're good magazines. And if you guys carry them, just rock on it. They work. Rock on, you know. Nothing wrong with them. Just not for me. That's all. Everything stock. Trigger, again, slide. Everything is stock. So this is my first entry into that realm of the slim, slimline, micro-compact handguns. I got the uh, night vision sight. This is when I start using the night sights. Trudium. U-notch in the rear. I really like that sight. But beside that, whole gun is stock. And again, I carried it in a very slim, g cold holster right. one of my favorite one i think this is called the eclipse or something like that awesome all right so now let's jump to 20 midway 2020 all right this is where it gets really interesting this is my glock 43 x mos i think i talked about this gun before i'm not sure on low show clear nothing in the magazine nothing in the chamber so we're all clear here guys all right so now uh you know 20 uh, 2019 I carried, again, the 48 for a little while, but I knew that I wanted something with optics cut and accessory. Uh, well, lo and behold, Glock, obviously, they're making everybody buy the same gun five times. Right? They came out with the MOS series, the X series. So you're going to get the optics cut up here. You're going to get the accessory rail. Now, 
you're probably wondering, Romeo, why didn't you just go with the 48 with the longer barrel, longer sight radius? I was like, whatever. I just want to try something a little different. Still Glock. I knew the trigger. I, can, I understand the trigger. Um, everything is familiar with me, okay? I ran a TLR 7 sub flashlight on here. I, I don't have it with me. I put on the other gun. And that worked good. I have a Holosun 407K 6 MOA red dot. Really like this setup. This is my first time using red dots. Now you're gonna notice a big thing here is that this is the big transition for me because now I'm really starting to embrace that idea of the micro compact handguns that we are familiar with now. You get a good grip length, running 15 round magazine, some shield arms, got a flashlight and got a red dot. I have the night vision sights again. So it sits just like that, really good sights. And I'm, I, I made this work for about two years. I carried this from my mid-2020 without the accessories, picked them up later on, carried it all the way until uh, like mid-2022. This was what I did. Uh, I made it work. I made it work. I carried it in the holster. I don't have my... I don't have the holster with me. Snappy, and I'm still on that Glock loyalty, but at this point in time, I'm starting to realize there's not a lot of value in these guns. They're not great. Triggers kind of snappy, kind of crappy. The, the, the OEM mags are only 10 round capacity and then the third party magazines they're 15 round they, they work most of the time but again i was telling you earlier i had those jams and i didn't i didn't like that if it works for you again great but they weren't for me so i got i knew i had to try something else and uh, that's what i did you know but then now you kind of see the the evolution right i'm starting to prioritize something a little more slim something that i can always carry it doesn't matter what time of the year it doesn't matter what i'm wearing there's no reason not to conceal carry these days guys me carrying this much more comfortable than carrying this okay you can, you can still make this work but with this man it's a night and day difference it's hard to go back to carrying a glock 19 no matter how well you can shoot that if you train and if you shoot you can shoot these micro compact handguns very very effectively i just want something a little different but again i'm used to the glock and um, you got to step away from the brand loyalty and that's that's what i end up doing so let's go on to the next gun now is mid 2022 and i got two guns to show you here my 365 xl by six hour right? we unloaded and we showed it clear earlier i also got another one i wanted to show you this is a springfield hellcat pro optics ready so you got the optics cut and accessory rail empty magazine nothing in the chamber we're all good i wanted to show you these two guns all right this, this is important for me and it should be for you too. I live in Washington State. Uh, 2022, um, our legislative, our, our government, they, they, they banned magazines, uh, standard capacity magazines. So nothing over 10 round, guys. This is lame. So you know, all those Glock OEM guys, they can rejoice with their 10 round bags. No, it was really sad, man. It was, it was a BS. I was pissed. A lot of people were pissed. It's hard to fight in Washington State, guys. It's hard. I mean, we tried. So basically... I bought these two guns because I wanted to try them out, but most importantly is that the, the magazine costs. When you buy these guns and you get the magazine, the magazines cost money, you know? I wanted to get this handgun while I could still get the 15 round mags, 13 round, uh, 12 round mags easily that come with the gun. Um, I have a flush fit here, 12 round magazine, one in the chamber, you got 13 rounds total. Still carrying on with that, that idea, that philosophy from the Glock 43X slim gun, and both the guns are very, very, very slim. 1.1 inch width, I believe. I carry EPS carry red dot fully enclosed. I really like it, and I'm I'm still waiting for G code to make a good holster for the TLR 7 sub. But for now, I'm just carrying it just like this, and it's working out great. I really like shooting it. Uh, this is just something that I wanted to to test out. My friend, uh, my good friend Cam has one. He really liked his. He carries it a lot. So I just wanted to see. What it was like to just have as a backup gun because after the magazine ban we didn't know what was going to happen they had a lot of other bills that they were trying to get pushed to and we were able to defeat some of those but still it was kind of close 15 round magazine comes with i think two or three of them so it was a, a lot of value in this gun so that's where i'm kind of settling at now right this is 2022 i've pretty much accepted micro compact handguns are the way to go right not much different between these two pick you know take your pick whatever it fits the budget better but they're pretty much the same gun the last handgun i wanted to show you real quick is my 365 x macro okay 
unload shelter, empty mag, and nothing in the chamber. We're all clear, okay? I picked this up, uh, I believe it was the end of uh, 2022, or maybe like fall of 2022, they released it. I actually got mines pretty early on. I remember when they announced this and they released it, it was the hottest thing on YouTube. You know, all the reviewers, all the YouTube guys, they, they got these guns from SIG, they were talking... A lot of good stuff about it, high praises, and I, I got mines pretty early on, but I didn't tell no one. I just wanted to shoot it a lot and have some time. You guys, you can't just run like 500 rounds, 1,000 rounds through a handgun within the course of like two day, two training sessions and say, you know, it's one of the best guns ever. You can't do that, man. Um, it's got to have a good track record. You got to give it time. You got to work out the kinks. You got to figure out, you know, if there are parts that fail or anything like that. Okay. Now, uh, is, this is an interesting gun to me. I got the TLR7 sub, I got an EPS carry, optics cut and everything. It, the gun is still slim, but the neat thing is that the, the, the grip right here, down here, is actually, it kind of flares out a tiny bit, so it fills up your hand a little bit better. But there's still a slim gun. So when I hold this, it feels just a little bit chunkier than a 365 XL stock, but um, they, they do it with the, the grip module. So it fills up the hand pretty good, but it's still a slim profile. Still slimmer than a Glock 19. And to me, this is an interesting gun because when you pick up a 365X macro or something like this, now you are literally going back towards that Glock 19 size because this is a larger size handgun. But you're carrying more ammo. Guys, you got 17 round magazine. 17 rounds in this in this uh, steel mag. This is insane. You got more ammo than the Glock 19 which is pretty freaking cool but like i was saying the behavior of these micro compact you can make them shoot and feel very similar to a standard handgun like a glock 19 so i'm not saying the glock 19s are going to go away forever i'm not saying that but for those of you guys you, you we got options now and i talked about that in their video you got options really like this handgun uh get the full size version if you can the full slide no comps the longer barrel i think this is a 3.1 inch barrel the full size is like a 3.4 just get the the full size i right? no, nobody cares about comps it is not going to make you shoot better if you don't you know get the fundamentals down all right so, <laughs> and it's also cheaper too you get more magazines yeah. i forgot to mention these 17 round mags that i totally owned and had before the july 1st uh, magazine ban in washington state <laughs> get wrecked bob ferguson that's my attorney general so there we have it guys all my concealed carry handguns from 2012 all the way up to 2023 you know i, I looking at this this composition definitely i could have held out and not gotten the 48 and just waited another couple months or a year or so just gotten the 43x mos so you kind of save some money there but again this is a journey right i needed to figure out whether or not this is something that's for me or not before i get it all tricked out like this um i didn't put the hellcat in because i didn't carry it uh, very much i just wanted to have it as a backup gun see how it felt but the hellcat honorable mention should be in here as well it's a good gun but now i pretty much settled on these two sometimes i like to carry this with the 15 round or even the sorry the 12 round flush mag or the 15 round sometimes i like to carry the x macro they're the same exact gun i shoot them both really really well so you can see the evolution you can see how I, you start with something very general something that everybody talked about everybody praised it was proven had a good track record glock 19 gen 4 2012 and then I start trying out the slimmer handguns because now I'm shifting my focus. I'm thinking less about all that that brand loyalty, that uh, proven track record, the reliability. All these guns are still reliable, but I'm stepping away from a lot of that general opinion that people always you know, kind of talk about and they kind of parrot that on the internet and wherever you go to the gun range. And I'm starting to figure out what works for me. And what works for me is having a slimmer gun that can carry a good amount of ammo, that has accessory features like optics cut because I like shooting with optics. This helped me a lot. I, I picked up the sight picture really fast and it is it's definitely helped me in my shooting. Carry a flashlight, good magazine capacity. And I've sort of pretty much settled on these two handguns. So hopefully these uh, considerations kind of help you guide in your purchasing decision. I don't want you guys to have to purchase a whole bunch of handguns just to figure out one thing works. I'd rather you guys kind of learn and try out different things and you know, make friends, right? Have a good community with you. Have some, some friends and you can try, you try out each other's handguns, see what works. That's what it was like 
for me in the early days. Uh, me and my, my friends, we all, we, I was the Glock guy. Cam had the CZP-01. My other friend had a Beretta um, PX4. It was a weird one. But, yeah, we figured out what we like, what we didn't like. And that's what you kind of have to do sometimes. And having friends helps in that that journey, right? Don't go do a solo. So hopefully this video will help you guide your decision making. You figure out what is important and what is not important. And coming from the perspective of just a regular Joe. Right? You and me, we're watching this. We're not big YouTube star. We're not made out of money. We can't buy every single handgun that comes out every year that people say is the best thing. It's just not, not realistic. Get a good handgun. Right? Get a light. Get a good good holster, get ammo, and just shoot, and you go from there, okay, any questions at all, just uh, put them, drop them in the comments, I'll get back to you real soon, yeah, yeah I'm trying to do some of these kind of like uh, information videos in between me just uploading shooting content all the time, but I got more stuff coming, all right, yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, sitting through me just rambling and stuff, man, take care, all right, bye-bye.